Hi guys, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard, and I got another deck profile for you guys. Today we're bringing back Shadow Paladin because we got some pretty decent support for blasters in DBT04. So I'm going to be showing you guys my updated version of my Phantom Blaster Dragon deck. And yep, let's just go ahead and get right into it. We're going to go with the ride deck like we always start with, with Full Bow. So Ride Chain, Full Bow, it's the OG Shadow Paladin ride deck, you know, the ride chain. So like all the other ones, if you go second, you draw. Grade one is Blaster Javelin. So when you ride Blaster Dark on top of Blaster Javelin, you call the top card of your deck as Rest. And if it's not a unit, it goes into the drop zone. You're guaranteed the call every single time. So you don't have to worry about that. Going on to grade two, Blaster Dark. So Blaster Dark skill is when this is placed on van or rear, you kind of blast one, retire another rear guard, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and you retire it and it gets drive plus one. So because you're gonna be guaranteed the unit to retire from Blaster Javelin, the only thing you really need is a counter blast, retire the thing you call, and now you have twin drive on your grade two turn. So that's, you know, pretty cool, just so you can have more cards in hand for that. And the skill also works if it's on rear and you get the over trigger because it gives you rear guards drive check. So you have a twin drive blaster dark when you give it twin drive through the over trigger effect. So it's also really cool. Finally, our grade three for our ride deck is Phantom Blaster Dragon. Skill is when it's placed on Vanguard Circle, you choose a unit with blaster in its name from your soul and you call it to rear guard circle. So you can either choose Javelin as a booster, Dark as a 15K beat stick, because you know, Blaster Dark gains 5k if something gets retired. Um, so you can start filling your board right away. Second skill is Act once per turn, you kind of blast one. Retire three of your rear guards and you choose up to two of your opponent's rear guards, retire them, and this gets 10k in a crit. So you have crit pressure from your Vanguard, control because you're wiping out two of your opponent's rear guards. Um, it is a little bit heavy since you are losing three units, but there are units in the deck that either count as two units or fill your board really easily. So you can kind of mitigate that fairly well. So that's pretty much it for the ride deck. Now we're just gonna go right into our grade threes. The only grade threes we're running in the deck is just our three other copies of Phantom Blaster Dragon. Uh, it's just mostly there for the on-ride skill and the persona ride. So the more uh, Phantom Blaster Dragons you ride, the more units you call. So you just boop, pull out another Phantom Blaster Dragon. That's a 13k beater. And since you persona rode, your front row gets 10k. So three other copies for the persona ride. It's a, the usual thing for standard. Moving on to grade twos, showing off a new card. Unnatural Knight Delbeth. Delbeth. So Delbeth skill is continuous during your turn. If two or more of your rear guards were retired for the cost of a unit with blaster in its name, this gets 10K. So as long as you're using Phantom Blaster's skill every turn for the most part, you're almost always gonna get that 10K. So this is a 20K beater. If you have a booster behind it, that's gonna put it at anywhere between 25 to 28K. Persona Ride puts it at 38. So even by itself, 30K, when you Persona Ride is still a really good beat stick. So that's pretty much why we're running the card at four. It's just so it's a really big number and it kind of puts a little more pressure on your opponent so that they have to guard more. It's a good, uh, like, common card. So, and now we're gonna go on to Maka. So we're running four copies of Maka. Maka's skill is when this is placed on Rear Guard Circle, if you have a Vanguard with Blaster in its name, it gets 5K. Then, you Soul Blast one, retire another rear guard, look at five cards from the top of your deck, choose one grade one or less, call it to rear and shuffle your deck. So you plop Maka down, she's instantly a 15K attacker. So that's awesome. The second part is that it helps you thin out your deck for grade ones. Yeah, it sucks you have to retire something, but what'll end up happening is when you're using the skill of a uh, new grade one, Mink, uh, Mugen, I think that's how it's pronounced, you're gonna be retiring rested units anyway, so it's fine. This is just kind of more of like a deck thinning card and just to pull out more units. And it's also the fact that it's a 15K beat stick. So Maka's really great for the deck. Definitely wanna be running for Maka for your Shadow Paladin deck. Lastly for grade twos, 
our other three copies of Blaster Dark. So we're running all four, one being in the ride deck. Uh, we already went over the Vanguard skill. Uh, the second skill for Rear Guard Continuous is if you, a Rear Guard was retired to this turn, it gets 5k. 5K. So like Maka, 15k beater when it attacks. And like I mentioned earlier, if you use the first skill to retire something on your opponent's board uh, while it's on the rear guard circle, if you get the over trigger, Blaster Dark now has twin drive on rear. So that's something to keep in mind that I feel like that can get often overlooked, if, especially if you use the skill and you swing, you don't get your drive check, your twin drive off. So always remember your Blaster Dark gets that extra drive. <laughs> All right, now we're moving on to the newer cards. So we got four copies of the card that immensely helped this deck improve, which is Armor Piercing Knight Mugen. So Mugen's skill is when this is placed on rear guard circle from hand. If you have a Vanguard or Blaster in its name, you discard a card from your hand, look at two cards from the top of your deck, choose up to two units, call them as rest, discard the rest. I will almost guarantee you're never going to want to discard the rest. You're pretty much always going to want to fill your board just so you have something to kill off for Phantom Blaster Dragon's skill. So filling your board, you, you discard one, you end up getting two units out of it. Really good. It does suck that it only works when you place it from hand, but we work with what we got. So this card is really good for helping you fill your board so you can kill it off and then kill off your opponent's board, give your Vanguard a drive check, uh, sorry, give your Vanguard an extra critical. So it just helps with the consistency. And speaking of consistency, because we're comboing this card off with Mugen, we're running four copies of Knight of Heavenly Piercing, Assalta. So Assalta's skill is when this is placed on rearguard circle or discarded during your turn, you choose one of your back row rearguards and you stand it. So because Mugen calls the unit as rest. If you call this as one of those units that gets called from the top of your deck and you call it to the back row, you can just stand itself. So you can just stand it. And this also helps if you're um, gonna be calling something that's like a grade two, like as a rested unit, like let's say you have a bell, uh, Let's say you have a Delbeth and you call it to the back row from the skill of Mugen and then you call this as the other unit. You could just stand this since it's in the back row and then move this up to the front as an attacker afterwards. So there's a lot of little things you can do with this deck with the help of Assalta. So I do like that. I notice other people are also running lag roll in Phantom Blast Dragon and using this card as well. That's another thing you can also do. So. Assalta has a lot of benefits to Phantom Blaster Dragon in general. Next up for grade ones, four copies of Witch of Pandering, Brunner. Brunner, uh, his main thing is that it counts as two units. So continuous rear guard circle if you have a Vanguard with Blaster. When this unit will be retired by your card's cost, it counts as two rear guards. So that way, if this ends up being called out by Maka or by Mulgan, it counts as two when it's rested you just pop it off as one of your costs for phantom blaster dragon so definitely running four just because it makes it easier not to lose too much of your board so we want to run four so it's more easily searchable lastly for the grade ones we're running four copies of age smear it is our go-to pg since we're playing standard it's the one where if you have two or more in hand you have to discard when it's placed in the guard circle. If you have one or less in hand after it's placed in the guard circle, you don't have to discard for its cost. So highly recommend getting four of those PGs if you can. Now we're moving on to triggers, starting off with our over trigger, which is our Martinoa. Our Martinoa's additional effect for the over trigger is your rear guards perform drive checks during the battle phase. So like I said earlier, if you have Blaster Dark, it has twin drive, use its first skill to counter blast and retire. Now on swing on rear, it has twin drive. The rest will just have single drive unless you call out a Phantom Blaster Dragon to rear. So it's just kind of basically the go-to over trigger because you want to have more hand and be able to drive check more things. And the Cray Elemental over trigger just to give the front row power, that could be helpful too, but I feel like the hand and the getting the drive checks is going to be a lot more helpful because it puts a lot more pressure 
on your opponent because you run critical triggers. So I like Armand to know as the go-to over trigger. Next up for newer triggers, four copies of the draw. So this is similar to the front trigger from DBT02. Its skill is Guardian Circle. If your opponent's Vanguard is grade three or greater, this gets 5k shield. So it's a draw trigger with 10k shield. It's for the first time ever, we finally have draws with 10k shield. So this is really cool. Draws are really good for the deck just because you want to have cards in hand. Uh, Mugen's skill only works when you call it from hand, so being able to have more targets, you know, to draw into and call it. Um, just being able to fill your board, and also since it has the lowest shield of the triggers, if you end up having to call it, it doesn't feel that much of a neg. Plus, damaging draw triggers always feels great because you get more advantage out of playing the game. All right, now we're moving on to the critical triggers. Four copies of Blade Feather Dragon. Uh, we do use soul in this deck, so there is a benefit of using its skill, which is at the end of the battle, this boosted, put it to soul, choose one of your units and it gets 2k. Um, Maka uses soul, so if you are running low on soul because you know, you're gonna be soul blasting throughout the game using multiple Makas, you can at least move this to soul to help fuel for future skills. Also, every time you ride Phantom Blaster Dragon, you call out a unit from your soul with Blaster in its name. So that's another unit that's depriving you of soul. So I definitely think four Blade Feather is helpful here. Lastly, for crits, um, we can only run the Vanillas just because they're the only other crits without with, with skills that we have not yet. That was words that just came out of my mouth. So we only have vanilla crits left for D right now. So we got to make do with what we got. So vanilla crits. And last but not least, four heals. Um, heals are always the go-to in decks, so those are our heal triggers. So that was pretty much it for the deck profile. I'll just kind of give a quick little sample of what the play style of the deck kind of looks like. So I'm going to kind of explain like a general idea of what you're going to be doing when you start your Phantom Blaster Dragon turn. So you can start pressuring your opponent and kind of controlling how you're going to build your board. So starting your turn, you're going to go ahead and discard something. It doesn't really matter. You're just doing it for the ride deck. You're going to go into your Phantom Blaster Dragon. First thing is Phantom Blaster Dragon's first skill, which is you get to call a unit out uh, from the soul. So we're just going to assume that we're going to need um, beat sticks based on what our hand is. If you look like it, your hand's got some great twos and you already got some good boosters, I would say call out Blaster Javelin. If you need some attackers, I'd say call it Blaster Dark. So we're going to call Javelin to the front row because we want to keep the back row open for now. So then the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to call Mugen also to the front row. Using Mugen's skill, we're going to discard Assalta if you have it. If you have Assalta in hand, these two are what are going to combo off. So discarding the Assault, you're going to look at the top two cards of your tech, and you have two units that you're going to call as rest. So then depending, it doesn't really matter which order you're going to do since they're both just like general boosters. So now finishing off with Assault skill, since you discarded this card during your turn, you can choose one of your back row rear guards and stand it. So looking, Maka is a good attacker, so I'm going to restand Maka. So now we have Maka as a attacker that we can do just by switching it around. Before we do that, we can go ahead and do Maka's cost. So now we can Soul Blast a unit. We can retire something. Let's just go ahead and since this doesn't do anything anymore, we'll retire this. Looking at the top five, look, we got another Brunner or we got another Assault Head. So we can do that, shuffle the deck, and then with the Salta skill, since it was placed, you can stand something. Now, of course, you're just going to be retiring these things. So Salta is just kind of more for like if you put grade twos in the back row, you restand them because we're going to be retiring stuff with Phantom Blaster Dragon right now. So we'll do Counter Blast. We're going to retire uh, Brunner's. Brunner counts as two uh, for retire cost because we need to retire three rear guards. So two and one, so retire three. Vanguard gains a crit and 10k, and now we can call out more beat sticks. So since we had this in hand, we would just call it to the front. But if you weren't confident that you were gonna have, if you had boosters in hand, this would be Blaster Dark, and you would just rearrange the order. So now you have a pretty good board. You have a 20k attacker, a 25k column, and you have a 23k Vanguard with the crit. 
So now you got a pretty decent feel to work with and it only really cost um, three cards in your hand because you needed one, two for the discard, and three is your other target for calling things. So this is a really easy combo to help you build a decent board when you're playing this deck. And you can kind of wiggle your way around it. Obviously, like I said, if you need more beat sticks, boom, call Blaster Dark. The main point I would say is that when you're first doing the skills, you want to be able to make sure that you keep your back row open so that you can take advantage of the Salta skill to stand your back row units and then just move them to the front afterwards. Keep your back row clear. Make sure that you're kind of piecing it and timing it together based on what your Mugen gives you. Based on what your Mugen gives you, you're gonna kind of figure out what to do with your back row. If you're gonna push them up as attackers or leave them back there as boosters. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate you guys coming out and watching these deck profiles. If you have any comments or any ideas that I could do to update this deck, just let me know in the comment section below. And let me know what you guys thoughts on DBT05, because we are getting Phantom Blaster Overlord when that set comes out. As of right now, as I'm recording this, we don't have the skill for Phantom Blaster Overlord yet. So kind of exciting to see what Shadow Paladin support we're gonna get in that set. And that's pretty much it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.